Hello, it's Jenny from Ginger Ninja Crafts. How are you? I hope you're doing well. This video is going to be my week four for the Deck the Year challenge, which is hosted by lovely Penny at Penny's Crafty Creations. I'll link her in the description box below. And I think when I did my video last week, I mentioned that this week's card had the idea to do one that was kind of inspired by Scotland because today, the day I'm filming this video, is Thursday the 25th, which is Burns Night. So, and I mentioned that we would be having haggis for our tea, vegetarian haggis, but haggis still. And I asked if anybody would want to see the haggis and hear about a bit more about that. And a few people said yes. So, I thought I will show you my card and... Um, I've got a little speedy, speedy video of me making it. And then after that, I'll come back and I'll tell you a little bit about what Burns Night's all about. And then I will record myself cooking. Well, I'll not do the whole of cooking the dinner. It's quite an easy dinner, actually. Um, but I'll tell you a bit about what we're, what we're having to have for our dinner and I will show you. So that is the plan. So you can just watch the deck the year bit. Or if you're interested in the rest, you can stay and watch a little bit longer. So um, this is my week four deck of the year. And this is um, a stamp. And this is the same step by All and Create. Um, and I bought it a while ago and I've not used it. I think she did a little series of all sorts of different countries. So you'll see when I insert the video um, that what I did with this was I stamped it and coloured it in and then I also did a bit of paper piecing. And the tartan paper is from the envelope from the Christmas card that Penny sent me. It had a lovely, um, the the back of it had a tartan panel on it. So I thought, ah, that's too good to just not use. So that's what I did. I just stamped it again and then fussy cut it out. You'll see that all in a minute. And I made the background, um, I gessoed it first and then I used a stencil from Tim Holtz that kind of looks a bit tartany um, and some texture paste. And then once that had dried, I used some Distress Oxide sprays. So I hope that you like my little Scottish um, card. It's even Scottish on the back because I'm using a, <laughs> a Scottish themed deck of cards so I hope that you like that and I will insert that clip right now of me um, making it it's very fast Okay, so if you've stuck around after the crafty bit, thanks very much. Pleasure to have you here. Um, I'm guessing that there's not too many Scottish people watching, but if they are and I've got anything wrong, just let me know in the comments. Um, so what is haggis and why do we have it on the 25th of January? Well, haggis is, I suppose, a bit of a national dish, really. It's very Scottish. It's probably the thing that people think about most often in terms of Scot traditional Scottish food and I suppose it's kind of like a big sausage um, it used to be made out of a sheep's stomach I think lining I should have a trigger warning for any anybody who's too squeamish um, and I think now it's made with kind of like a sausage casing and but it's got sort of awful in there and it's probably, I think it's got like oats and sort of peppery spices in there too. Um, and the traditional way to serve it, which I will be doing tonight, is with tatties, potatoes, neeps, which are, um, well, we call them turnips. I think even in England, I think you would call, what we call neeps, you call them 
Swedes, I think. But it's a turnip or a neap here. <laughs> um, and I usually make a wee cream whiskey sauce. Um, and I dare say my husband will have a wee whiskey, although I don't like it. So I don't mind it in a sauce. But So, yeah, that's what we'll be having tonight. And it's part of the reason that we have it around Burns Night is that there is um, there is a poem that's read at a Burns Supper address, addressing the haggis or addressed to the haggis. So I think that's probably partly why, because it's it's part of that um, the tradition of a burn supper. So what is a burn supper? Well, a burn supper, although I haven't been to one for a very very long time, not since my Highland dancing days, which is long long past. Um, but a burn supper is a kind of celebration of the life of Robert Burns because it is. The 25th of January was his birthday and he is, um, or was, I suppose, Scotland's most famous poem, poet, probably. Um, and if you think you don't know anything about Robert Burns and you've never heard any Burns poetry, I think you're probably wrong because I'm sure you have all heard Old Lang Syne and probably sang it at New Year. And he wrote the words for Old Lang Syne or Old Man's Eye. As my husband, my South African husband, thought was how you pronounced it when he was still living in South Africa. So yes, you probably have. I heard somebody say that Old Lang Syne is the second most sung song in the world, probably in the English speaking world, um, second only to Happy Birthday. I don't know if that's true, but could be could be fake news. But anyway. So I have got this little book which I bought when we were on holiday in Dumfries and Galloway because, well, Burns was from Ayrshire actually, but I think he lived some of his life in um, Dumfries and Galloway as well. And he was a bit of a boy over Robert Burns. He was definitely a ladies' man. I don't think he was always the best um, in his behaviour towards women. I don't think he was, like, violent or anything. I think he was just... he was a uh, a bit of a, what would the word be? Lothario, is that the word? I don't know, a bit of a cad. I think he had a lot of women on the go. Um, but yes, what was I going to say? He died when he was only 37 years old, so he packed quite a lot into that, into his relatively young life. He was the first Scottish bard. Um, he was born in poverty in 1759 um, and became the toast of society, which was riding high as the centre of the world's enlightened ph philosophising. So part of the, that enlightenment period in Scotland. Um, he worked the family farm, um, was very lucky to receive formal education and improvement. Um and yes, it says he was quite the dandy and seemed to have a good line in patter. Do you know what patter is? Kind of sort of banter. Mm. Um, described by a friend as having a facility in addressing the fair sex. Ladies, man. Um, he did marry. He married Jean Armour, and I think they had about nine children together. Um, he was also a tax man, an excise man. But yeah, so he did a lot in his relatively short lives, including writing a lot of poetry. And although that is a long time ago, 1790s, when he was born, it's still quite um, he's still very relevant in, in Scottish culture, I would say. In fact, at our wedding, one of my friends um, read a Burns poem. We had a bit of a Scottish um, South African crossover in our wedding. We wanted a bit of both cultures kind of represented. So my, my good friend read My Love is Like a Red Red Rose. And I'll try to find a little video of somebody um, reciting that for you. It's a very beautiful poem. Um, and 
things like when our when our Scottish Parliament opened, um, Burns poetry was sung at that, um, and I'll I think I've got a there's a video of um, mid year. Some people that are my age might remember Ultravox, and mid year was very involved in um, the Live Aid um, concert. Back in the long distant past, anyway, so uh, mid-year singing, um, a man's a man for all that, um, at the opening of the Scottish Parliament. Um, so I'll include some links below of some of his work if you're interested. I think I've also, I don't know if I've said this already, but I've got a little clip of Sam Hewen, who is Jamie from Outlander, reading the address to the haggis. So if you want to... Um, if you want to listen to that too they'll all be there um, and what was the last one I wanted to just say uh, one of his other there's quite I mean there's I don't know many of his poems poems but um, you know at school we did a little bit um, I can remember at I think at Halloween time doing Tam O'Shanter which is a long sort of story and poem form really um, and also reading the Selkirk Grace so um, the Selkirk Grace is some folk he meet that canna eat and some can eat that want it but we he meet and we can eat so let the Lord be thank it um, I think he was quite a um, he spoke up for people that were suffering in life and those who are not as well off as he became in, in periods of his life um, was was for um, equity and um, for people to be treated fairly and um, I think for all he was a bit of a cad and a dandy with the ladies I think he was quite a good person in a lot of ways. So that is my little intro to Burns for you without me embarrassing myself trying to recite poetry um you will see coming up next me telling you a bit about my veggie haggis you'll see me with my neeps and my tatties and the whiskey sauce and um yeah i hope that that's been of some interest to you um let me know in the comments have you been at a burns night have you had haggis um do you know any of Burns' poetry? Is that something that you have, have heard before, apart from Old Lang Syne? Um, I'd be interested to know. And let me know where, the, where in the world you are, because if you're Scottish, of course you have. Um, but uh, there was a few people even from down south who, was, who said they'd never tried haggis and things. So. so, yeah, let me know in the comments. So the next you'll see me is in my kitchen, pottering about trying not to burn the dinner. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now. Hello. So I'm just cooking the dinner. I've got the potatoes boiling and I've got my neeps on. Um, this is the packet of the veggie haggis. So it is, um, what does it say is in it? It's a mix of vegetables mixed with oatmeal, pulses and spices. And the spices, it says there's black pepper and pimento. Um, it's got oats, barley, carrots, swede, leeks, lentils, dried onion, chickpeas, kidney beans, salt, sweet corn, all sorts of good stuff. Now, I was about to show you it, but I have actually started chopping into it, so that is a problem. I didn't have my microphone on. That is it, I've started to chop it up. It comes in this little casing, a bit like a big fat sausage, as I said. So I've just chopped it up because I am going to cook mine in the microwave. So my tatties are on. That My husband cheated and got me <laughs> carrot and neeps. Um, already all chopped up. Easy to mash. We just perched on the honey pot there. Now you can cook this in the oven, but it takes a lot longer. So I am just going to do it in the microwave, which is what I normally do. 
we just pop this stuff in the bin. So that is it in a wee microwave pot and remind myself how long it's cooked for uh, three minutes break it up a bit more and then another two minutes so it's much quicker in the microwave and it doesn't make any difference so that is how i'm going to cook it um, <laughs> The last thing, of course, is the whiskey sauce. So, let's put the big light on. Give us the whiskey shell. Now, none of this is mine, but I will select one or I'll ask what I'm allowed to use. And I'll show you. So I'll be back once this is all cooked away to show you the... Um, whiskey sauce and then plating it all up. See you in a minute. Okay, so everything is ready. So I've got my tatties or potato. Pop some of that in there. And I've got some neeps and carrot. And I've got the haggis. So there you go. All ready to dish up. like so and then I'm going to pop a wee bit of my whiskey sauce just like that and same for my other half So what I did for the whiskey sauce was I used this uh, dairy free cream, a wee bit of mustard and this was the whiskey I was allowed to use, the best from Aldi. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will hopefully enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.